This video is brought to you by NordVPN. The next general election is not really expected to take place until the end of 2024. And if the last year has taught us anything, it's that anything can happen. So normally we'd suggest that it's a tad early to start trying to make suggestions about what could happen in the run-up, such as the focus of the campaigns, how leaders will fare in TV debates, and which policies could make their way into the manifestos. However, last week, Labour List revealed an 86-page full-draft policy platform from Labour. It contains submissions from various Labour groups, policies that could well make their way into the 2024 manifesto. So in this video, we're going to have a look through some of the largest findings and potential policies from this document. Now, before we start, we need to say a big thank you to Labour List for being the first to publish this and reaching out to give us access to the original document. So, getting into the document, we see that it's split into six key areas that will support the delivery of Keir Starmer's five national missions. There are numerous policies within each of these areas, although it's worth noting that none of them will be in the final manifesto until they're debated, amended and agreed by the National Policy Forum, agreed at Labour's annual conference, and finally approved by Labour's Clause 5 meeting ahead of the next general election. So we should stress that these are simply policy suggestions. They're not necessarily going to make it into the manifesto, as some broadsheets have been disingenuously suggesting. We're looking at you, Telegraph. So let's start by looking through some of these policies, starting with Labour's potential policies on a green and digital future. One of the most radical policies in this section is a £28 billion investment in the green economy, funded by the public. This money would be spent according to an active industrial strategy, which would include public investment in the private sector. In the document, Labour describes the advantages of this as bringing high-quality, unionised, sustainable jobs to all parts of the country. While this is definitely the heftiest policy of the section, not least because of the huge financial commitment, they do refer throughout to various plans to try and decarbonise the economy. This includes a vague commitment to deliver clean electricity by 2030, double onshore wind capacity, triple solar capacity and quadruple offshore wind capacity. Some of the other commitments are things that we've already heard about. For example, the commitment to create GB Energy, which would be a publicly owned company that aims to increase clean energy generation. Moving on from energy, separate policies are included in the document that propose to establish a legal right to breathe clean air and the closure of fox hunting ban loopholes. The second section of the document is on better jobs and better work. One of the biggest policies in this section is the potential reform to the UK tax system. These suggested policies include ending tax breaks for private equity bosses, removing the non-DOM tax loophole, and cracking down on tax evasion and avoidance. Summarising these points, it's argued that the next Labour government will scrap and replace the current system of business rates in England and Wales with a fully costed and funded system of business property taxation that's fit for the 21st century. Now, this is a very simple thing to promise, but taxation is tricky, not least because of the globalised world in which we live. It's hard to tell whether Labour would actually be able to do this without a more thorough policy proposal. Anyway, it seems that in the document, Labour's policies on working people seems to be the most thorough. As we mentioned earlier, the document was called out by the right-wing press for containing a policy that would make flexible working the default. But on top of this, Labour would also introduce legislation to make companies more transparent on the gender pay gap and to outlaw fire and rehire schemes. Unsurprisingly, from a political party that grew out of the trade union movement, there are some proposed policies that would try and strengthen unions, such as scrapping the minimum service levels bill and a vague commitment to strengthen rights for trade unions to organise, represent and negotiate. Anyway, moving on to the third section, safe and secure communities. This is an area that Starmer has tried to demonstrate that Labour should be trusted on. One of the potential policies is the commitment to hire another 13,000 neighbourhood police officers, a clear attempt to reverse the decline in police numbers that has occurred under the Conservatives' 13 years in office. In addition to this, there were a number of policies that would toughen punishments for existing crimes, such as a new respect order designed to tackle antisocial behaviour, a new counter-extremism strategy, and making misogyny a hate crime. In this section, there were also a rather large number of constitutional changes, 
with a policy to introduce votes for 16 and 17-year-olds, a ban on second jobs for MPs, and the abolition of the House of Lords. So, moving on to the fourth section, where Labour discusses public services. Obviously, one of the key focuses here is the NHS. There are a number of proposed policies that simply aim to hire more NHS professionals, such as aiming to train 10,000 new nurses and midwives each year and doubling the number of medical school places to 15,000 per year. There are also policies that look at more structural changes. However, again, these are rather vague. For example, putting children at the heart of Labour's mental health plan or acting to end the black maternal mortality gap. Neither of these are specific proposals to fix a problem. It's just the promise to fix a problem. To be fair, in the fifth section, entitled A Future Where Families Come First, some of the big commitments appear to actually be a bit more substantive. For example, one of the policies is to give first-time buyers first dibs on new developments in their area, and a policy in which the state will act as a guarantor on homeowners who can afford mortgage payments but cannot save for a large deposit. Additionally, one of the proposed policies is to end the leasehold system. Finally, in the sixth section, the document turns to have a look at Britain in the world. In this, there were quite a number of policies that refer to specific current events, such as the commitment to hold Vladimir Putin's Russia and Belarus to account. There's also a proposed policy that would apply a NATO test to ensure that the UK's NATO commitments are fulfilled. This section also includes a vague promise to try and reduce nuclear risk. While this policy is not calling for nuclear disarmament, the language certainly implies that, if the policy was adopted, Labour's government might not be as fully behind the UK's nuclear stockpile as the Tories. Now, it's worth reiterating that this is a long policy document, and we weren't able to cover everything. But these are the main proposed policies. So let us know in the comments if we missed anything substantial. A few weeks ago, we were invited to Downing Street, where we were briefed on the government's anti-fraud plan. As part of this, we found out that more younger people have fallen victim to online scams than over 35s. And, as our analytics frequently tell us, our audience skews younger, which means that you're likely in this age bracket. So, if you want to protect yourself online, you should try NordVPN. NordVPN has a bunch of tools that keep you safe. First, they have a feature called Threat Protection, which protects you from malware, trackers, malicious ads, and phishing scams. But that's not all. NordVPN also has dark web monitoring services, which, even if you somehow do fall victim to online fraud or scams, notifies you if your details end up online, so you can promptly change your passwords and keep yourself protected. And what's more, if technology isn't really your thing, don't worry. NordVPN offers 24-7 customer support and even a 30-day money-back guarantee for all users. So check out our link in the description to get your discount on their two-year plan, plus four extra months on top of that. Thanks for your support.